Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day to start things off. Ethereum co-founder, his name is Vitalik Buterin, says the Ethereum blockchain is almost full. In an interview with The Star, published on the 19th of August, he said the hurdle that faces big organizations interested in the e Ethereum ecosystem is the still thorny matter of the blockchain's scalability. Buterman's start comments were made as part of a discussion of what he perceives to be the biggest roadblock to the widespread adoption of cryptocurrencies. He conceded that, and I do quote, scalability is a big bottleneck because the Ethereum blockchain is almost full. If you're a bigger organization, the calculus is that if we join, it will not only be more full, but we will be competing with everyone for a transaction space. It's already expensive. And it will be even five times more expensive because of us. This is the pressure keeping people from joining, end quote. As for how to improve the situation, Buterman says the network needs to evolve away from the idea that every computer is required to verify each and every transaction to a model whereby a computer on average verifies only a small portion of the transactions on the blockchain. When Bitcoin uh, first got started, or rather by the time that I got into Bitcoin, the thing was that you had to go to, I believe it was, I want to say Bitcoin.org or blockchain. I forgot the exact website where it was. We had to download the actual Bitcoin Core uh, application, and pretty much what happened was is that you had to download it, wait for it to download it, download it onto your desktop. You double clicked it, and you had to download the entire blockchain. That is to say, every single transaction that had happened on the blockchain had to be downloaded onto your computer. In the beginning, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't uh, terrible. Sometimes you would have to wait about a good three or four hours. You know. Things were okay. And I remember at one point, I think I hadn't opened my wallet. And I remember it said about three weeks that I had to wait. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, that's a really big problem. So a lot of you may have realized, especially if you have like a desktop wallet, when you when you click on it, if you haven't clicked on it in a number of weeks, it'll give like a, uh, not an updating sign, but kind of like a, 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 a downloading symbol. Like give, it a, like give it a couple seconds because it is downloading a portion of the last maybe 50,000 or so transactions that have happened on the actual blockchain so that your computer is aware of the other things that took place while you weren't there. But it doesn't download the entirety of the blockchain. And this is why things have gotten uh, fairly quicker than they were before. Because imagine downloading the Bitcoin software now and having to download nine, 10 years worth of transactions. It would take a pretty long time. Anyway, so this is uh, that portion just to kind of clarify exactly what he means. Like not having to verify every single transaction to download every single thing that's happened on the blockchain is simply only having to do a portion of it or maybe if they figure out a way so that it, if it is decentralized enough uh, and everyone gets a 20% split, then you only need five computers to download the entire thing at one time as opposed to doing the entire thing. Anyway, the improved scalability this would provide would bring costs down by a factor of over 100, he claimed. And while security is to some extent sacrificed by such a move, the compromise would be the fairest model in his words. Beyond scalability improvements and other technical advances, Buterman noted that the challenge remains in terms of transforming blockchain technology into something people will actually use. Um, you guys know I love Ethereum. I think it's really cool. Uh, but things like this, I don't want to say it worries me. It's more like a... It's kind of like everyone's talking about the king is sick and then the people are like, no, the king's not sick. And you see the king and the king's not sick. And then the king kind of goes on to television. He's like, I'm, I'm a little sick. Uh, so then I appreciate that the people from Ethereum, especially, I mean, if we just want to focus on Vitalik Buterin, that Vitalik goes onto the news and talks about the actual hindrances and problems that the Ethereum blockchain does face. Cool. Awesome. Amazing. It's nice to see the, uh, the transparency on that part however it's been a very long time and nothing has we, we, we've had many proposals for exactly how to address the scalability issue but to date none have happened i think we have one update that is the precursor for the other updates i would think it a bit silly if they're having discussions like this talking about the, the, the ethereum blockchain is almost full before they actually plan on implementing other things i believe one is in october and one is in the beginning of january as far as the things that will help Ethereum to begin to scale. So it's kind of odd. Here's the actual uh, article right here, which has a very weird headline. It says, multi-millionaire, 25-year-old crypto king 
Metallic Buterin speaks to the star about the future of Ethereum. I feel like this could have been completely dropped from it and just said Vitalik Buterin or even the, the Ethereum co-creator. Uh, I've noticed a lot of websites. Remember I said before uh, how they're changing the wording of how they talk about people in the cryptocurrency industry. And one of the main things that they're starting to pop up to do again, especially um, I've, I've noticed myself, maybe it's because I take in a large amount of articles every single day is that they're starting to make sure to use the word millionaire and billionaire over and over and over and over. There's a reason why they use the word multi-millionaire, 25-year-old crypto king. Multi-millionaire is to get you drawn in because this person is rich. 25-year-old is because he's under the age of 30. And therefore, this is a, when, you're, when, you, when you become a millionaire under the age of 30, this is seen as a huge accomplishment. How did this person do this before I did? And it also draws you in. And crypto king, I assume, was just thrown in there as like another title to give someone a multi-millionaire king who's only 25. Anyway, uh, j just to let you know how, how the news works and how they use certain words to make sure to draw you in. Uh, this is what happened. I still have high hopes for Ethereum. And I wonder if they're, I mean, Vitalik has kind of always been very outspoken. I was going to say if they're taking a page from uh, what Binance does, because Binance is also very transparent. But if you look back at the news, uh, Vitalik Buterin doesn't really have a filter. Uh, a couple of years ago, people were kind of uh, talking crap about him, and he he doesn't hold back. I don't think he has any actual fear in his heart uh, when he talks about people. Here's the actual. Uh, where was the other thing? Uh, maybe it's gone. And oh yeah 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 yeah. It was something at the bottom of the article I think uh, where people were asking him what he thought about the future of cryptocurrencies. And he says he believes, he has it in a tweet right here, he said the future of cryptocurrencies is diverse and pluralist. He, like many other people, believe that there will not only be uh, one single crypto. I, I, th mm, I think it's a little foolish to think that Bitcoin will be the only one who makes it. Like I said before, I could definitely see a, a situation where Bitcoin controls maybe over 50% of the market or maybe always does simply because of the name. Uh, but to think that Bitcoin will be the only one who makes it is a little weird. I mean, I may be eating my words in about a good 10 years time. Once again, nobody knows the future. Anyway, uh, that is the Ethereum uh, updating going to update news. You, 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 you kind of get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, for those who don't know, we have a very weird news day. I, I, I don't know if you uh, picked up on that yet. A Bitcoin Twitter account with almost a million followers has dumped Bcash in favor of Bitcoin, the number one coin, and everyone is trying to explain why. This is probably the most perplexing thing that's happened in a very long time. In a seemingly random turn of events, at Bitcoin on Twitter, one of the Bitcoin's industry's biggest misnomers suddenly began promoting Bitcoin, the number one coin, in line with its Twitter handle, in addition to retweeting another tweet critical of Bitcoin, Cash, and its main advocate, Roger Ver, the account changed its Bitcoin white paper link from Ver's Bitcoin.com website to the actual source Bitcoin.org. Ad Bitcoin had previously spent several years promoting Bcash, using its coveted Twitter handle to fool observers into believing the altcoin was, in fact, Bitcoin. This was a major problem in 2017 and 2018, and this is why I'm going to give you a little bit of, of a mini history lesson. As far as I know, and this is easily findable information on the internet, Roger Ver lives in Japan. I want to say even more so Tokyo. There are a lot of videos where they were calling him uh, the Bitcoin king and blah, 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 and how he lived in Japan. And he was like spreading the word of Bitcoin. What he was actually doing was is he, prom he was promoting Bcash incredibly heavily within the country as if it was actually Bitcoin, that is to say, as if Bcash was the number one coin. I'll put it to you that way. What ended up happening was uh, his propaganda worked and millions of people, or rather so they say, within Japan uh, now think of Bcash as the coin that's going to one day usurp Bitcoin or take it over. And therefore, this is why Bcash has so many uh, so followers, followers within Japan. On top of that, uh, for some reason... He and a bunch of other people got lucky enough to uh, be at the very front of the wave. And this is why the at Bitcoin Twitter handle uh, was or rather belonged to or was promoting Bcash. It was because they got the handle first and therefore they told tons of people that Bcash was actually Bitcoin. We have the most followers. Therefore, 
ours is true, ours is so and so. For those of you who also were not here during the course of 2000, the end of 2017, around 2000, beginning of 2018, I was looking for the article. And it's very interesting how you can create other articles or have other articles completely uh, stack on top of yours so that it's very difficult to find. I was searching for about a good five minutes. I was like, okay, whatever. For those of you who do remember, what happened during the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, was that Roger Ver, who was in control of the Bitcoin.com website, which was promoting Bcash, uh, you were actually able to buy either Bcash or Bitcoin on the website. People were like, that's cool. Great. You know, at least he's uh, trying to promote both in the space, you know, as, as a friendly bit of competition to see exactly which one uh, will gain more support. As people were trying to buy Bitcoin, the number one coin, on the Bitcoin.com platform, they had actually switched the name of Bcash to simply Bitcoin. And they, the number one coin, Bitcoin, they changed it to Bitcoin Core. So when people went to the website trying to buy the number one coin, they were like, which one do I... I think I want Bitcoin. Bitcoin Core doesn't sound like what I want. So people were buying Bcash because they had changed the name on their website to Bitcoin. And when people were trying to withdraw their Bitcoin, which was Bcash, to their cryptocurrency wallet with a Bitcoin address, it said invalid. Why did it say invalid? Because it wasn't Bitcoin. It was Bcash. So stuff like this has been going on uh, for a, a, a very long time, if I can kind of say that. Commenters assumed Ver had control of the account, which was Bitcoin, at Bitcoin. But in April 2018, he denied this, claiming he nonetheless knew the real owner of the pro Bcash account. He said, and I do quote, he supports Bcash, is well known in the Bitcoin ecosystem, but doesn't want to deal with incessant trolling. So he has chosen not to make his identity public. He wrote in a tweet at the time. After at Bitcoin began changing its tune, Ver was forced to respond, but on Reddit seemed to be less than concerned about its activities. I'm not, I'm not reading the rest of it. The point is, it appears that you should remain as skeptical as possible. The at Bitcoin tw handle on Twitter formerly used to belong to tons of people, we can only assume, who were obsessed with Bcash. The only reason, remember I said before, if Bcash, SV, and even Ethereum Classic didn't have the names Ethereum or Bitcoin before them, no one would use them. Why do you think that they kept and made sure to not change the name of at Bitcoin to at Bitcoin Cash? Because they would have lost tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of followers overnight, and they knew this. So... There's speculation abound right now that people think that the at Bitcoin Twitter handle, which previously used to be in love with Bcash, may simply be trying to figure out a way to get more people onto their platform and then simply at some point announce, hey, uh, you know what? I can't take this anymore. Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin and therefore you should only be following it. Watch out because they've done stuff like this before, not saying that it's going to happen again, but if the past two years... Uh, tells us anything about the nature of people who are keeping in mind. This isn't me bashing uh, Bcash, but it's more like if it was just called cash, would you still be using it? Would it be in the position where it is right now? Nope, it, it definitely wouldn't be. A lot of people, uh, who's, who said it? Where was it? Uh, someone was saying that apparently they think that the person who runs the at Bitcoin handle uh, could have been romantically involved with Ver. At some point, there was a little spat, a spate. Something wrong happened, and therefore they turned on him and simply said, no, it is just Bitcoin now. I don't believe it. I don't know. It's a lot of we really weird stuff going on. Anyway, uh, like I said, it's going to be a weird video, so uh, keep hanging on. <laughs> Next up, the Winklevies are once again in the news. Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss. I wouldn't even call them Bitcoin bulls anymore. I, I would call them money bulls. And founders of the Gemini Crypto Exchange say they are open to partnering with Mark Zuckerberg on Libra. CNN Business reported on the 19th of August that the twins are not allowing their notorious and drawn-out settlement with Zuckerberg stand in the way of a potential collaboration, meaning someone who spat in their face they don't mind working with him. 
as long as they can make money. Whether or not a partnership will fully materialize, Cameron told CNN that Libra represents a step towards mass adoption of cryptocurrency, underscoring, and I do quote, he said, I think there is a day in the future where we can't live without crypto or imagine a world before crypto, end quote. As CNN noted, the twins' proactive promotion of crypto regulatory matters could make the duo an attractive partner for Facebook, given the widespread alarm the latter Libra's project has already sparked among governments and regulators globally. The twins revealed they have been in talks about joining the Libra Association, which currently counts 28 members and should expand to 100 by the time of Libra's launch. Tyler and Cameron noted, however, that they still need to learn about the details of the project before deciding whether or not to join the association, as well as whether to list Libra on the Gemini Exchange. My actual goodness. Uh, side note, this is my opinion. My, me, myself, I, this is how I think. Uh, this is one of the largest cop-outs in the entire world. I already don't care for the actions of the Winklevi. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I think they're incredibly boring. I think you lose an enormous amount of integrity, a face of self. Can you imagine going to university with somebody who lies to you? Imagine, imagine, having, imagine knowing someone who punches you in the face every single morning, spits on you, kicks you, knocks you down, even takes you to court and says that, that you are the one hitting them. And then at some point you go, they're not that bad. I see they're making a lot of, I would like to also make money. Maybe, maybe I can be friends with them again. It would be incredibly unironic if the Geminis joined with Facebook on Libra and were at some point in the next three years burned once again or some other lawsuit materialized, I don't think any of us would actually be surprised. No one really trusts Facebook and or Zuckerberg anymore. That's, that's part of the issue is that we've, when you tell the people, billions of people who are using your platform that you're going to do something and then you don't do it, but you lie about seven times in a row, People kind of stop trusting you. That's the people, people go, okay, fool me once, shame on me, fool me seven times, I'm going to stop using your platform. It's a really weird thing. There's also this article right here for those who are not looking at the screen. It says, it says, it says, it says, why Winklevoss twins say trust in Libra cryptocurrency, not Facebook. And there's Mark Zuckerberg laughing right there. Where's the quote? Somewhere around here it says, Libra is a product that Gemini could work with. It might actually do so depending on if it's open source. It could be traded on the Gemini exchange for sure. I myself believe, this is my own opinion, they probably are already or have or in the process of signing paperwork to be able to join one of this. I assume myself that they are frothing, frothing at the mouth to be able to be one of the possible 100 uh, node holders or node ho holders of uh, Facebook's Libra. Because as of right now, I believe we knew 27 members of Libra. Apparently, there's now a 28th. And apparently, there are only going to be 72 more spots to be able to run a node to validate transactions for Libra. And I assume major companies around the world are now trying to do anything that they can to make sure that they are part of that remaining uh, 72 uh, partners, and this is why I was talking with a friend about this. I don't know if you're listening. Hello, if you are. Uh, I was telling him about Libra and how insane it's going to be, and what they're actually planning on trying to do to take over the world. Uh, the fact that we have eBay, PayPal, Visa, Mastercard, Uber, Lyft, uh, banks also as well, who are also going to be part of this. Uh, it's pretty clear that the mega money is going to put their weight behind Libra and Facebook because they probably understand that Libra and Facebook are going to become one of the largest banks overnight, and therefore, in an effort to not really be uh, washed away by the tsunami, sorry, uh, it's just kind of how it is, uh, they're trying to also be a part of this. It's very weird. I understand why they're doing it. Nobody wants to be left behind, but I don't think I could ever... No, I, it's it's... I would, I would be afraid of my own integrity bursting into flames. I don't think I could ever become friends with someone again or even, even work with them in, 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 a, in a symbiotic relationship. Maybe it's just me. Maybe there are, I'm sure there are tons of people out there who just don't care. It's just about the money. Uh, feelings aside, cool. Anyway, uh, this is the actual article from CNN Business about the Winklevies. And um, I think, once again, myself, we will probably hear news 
in quarter four, if this partnership has uh, transpired and or solidified, once uh, we get closer to Libra's actual launch. Next up, one of the largest mobile providers in Austria is planning to accept cryptocurrency for payment at certain store locations. A1, which services some 5.1 million mobile and 2.1 million fixed lines across Austria, is testing cryptocurrency payments at store locations across Austria. The really weird part, or rather the, the interesting part here, the coins that they're talking about using for payment, Dash, Ether, Litecoin, Lumens, and XRP. Notice one who's missing. These coins will be available for payment according to the report by Austrian tech news site FutureZone. Founded in 1881. Holy cow, that is a, that's a long, that's a super long time ago. Mike, were there phones in 1881? It, wow, it sounds so stupid. Founded in 1881, AI serves 5.1 million of the current 6.2 million Austrian mobile phone users. Okay, so they're, they're, they're pretty much a good portion of the market. The pilot program will also host payments for Alipay and WeChat Pay. By the end of August, as of now, FutureZone listed seven initial locations accepting cryptocurrency payments across Austria. They said cash is a discounted model, said the head of A1's business marketing, Mark Schreiber, to FutureZone. With our pilot operation in the A1 shops, we will test demand and acceptance of digital currency in Austria. That's quite fascinating. I, I mean, it's not the most exciting news story that we've had. But it's kind of cool. Uh, imagine your local news, news, your no, your local, your local mobile network provider. My goodness, uh, announcing that eighty percent of the people within your country are going to have the option of now paying in cryptocurrency, and even more so, uh, Dash is not a coin. That, Dash and nope, nope. Dash, Lumens, and XRP are typically not the first coins that we see, especially Dash. How they get to Dash? Uh, listed as a, a payment option. Uh, Ethereum and Litecoin sometimes make the list, but the fact that Bitcoin isn't even there is quite interesting. Here's the actual article right here. It's a very weird website. It's kind of all squished to one side. Uh, this is all over the place. You can't really uh, see what's going on, but here's the actual article right here. Um, and yeah, kind of, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> For those of you who don't read German uh, and are not looking at the screen, there's an article uh, that says, and I do translate, North Korea is using stolen Bitcoin for developing atomic weapons. <sighs> Next up, and pretty much to kind of uh, finish things off, for those of you who do not know, I am once again apologizing for being the bearer of bad news. Bitcoin's price... <laughs> price has fallen. I wonder why I do that. I, I saw some people talking in the, in the comment section before saying that I, I do that because my, my brain is going faster than I talk or my, I don't know what, what it is. Maybe I have, what's that thing where you like mix up the words and confuse them or stuff like that? I can't remember the name of it. I, I have something. I have something within me that is making me uh, read incorrectly all the time. Thanks for those of you who've stuck around through my uh, weird reading. I give you digital hand fives, five, high fives in the, in the air. I'm smacking the air, hoping someone is smacking back. It says Bitcoin's price has dropped by $700 within minutes after failing to crack $11,000. Yes, it is true. For some reason, uh, before I was going to bed, Bitcoin was around $10,890 or something like that. Apparently, uh, waking up. The price did not make it, and it is uh, currently, at the moment, falling down. However, um, if you want a little bit of a silver lining to all of this, once again, no one on this planet knows exactly what's going to be happening to the price of Bitcoin. The next couple of articles read, uh, Bitcoin price recent breakdown could accelerate decline, so there are people who think that things will continue to go south. Bitcoin rebuffed at 11,000, but still in bull territory. I saw this a lot of places. People are saying that we're still apparently in the in the bullish region, uh, despite the ups and downs that we are uh, going through. This one says Bitcoin rally set for $12,000 next week. This one says Bitcoin price will struggle and big financial crisis, says investor. 
shrug. Who knows? No one knows. That's the beautiful part of the cryptocurrency market is that no matter what, no matter how bullish you can be, no matter how bearish you can be, uh, we've had people, remember, talking about we were going to have an $800 Bitcoin, and a couple months later, we were nearing $14,000. No one knows. At the moment, there does not seem to be explicit information as to why the price of Bitcoin in the wider cryptocurrency market has fallen. I assume sometime later on today, it's either it's, it's, it's always the same. Um, somebody moved a lot of Bitcoin. Someone put in a massive sell order. Uh... Or some some cryptocurrency exchange that we've never heard of uh, got hacked, or hmm, what's the other thing? Th th there's always something. No matter what happens, it's always the same kind of news. I'm glad uh, for those of you who were not here a couple of months ago. A very weird situation where just about every other day there was a cryptocurrency exchange that was being hacked, and I was like, they're a bit too close. I I get if every it's every month, every eight weeks. It's a big hacking operation, but it, it was every other day, and I, I assume they were all coordinated. And the moment I said I thought they were coordinated, they all stopped because it was kind of obvious. No one's hacking a, 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 another crypto exchange every other day. Anyway, the point is uh, something caused the price drop. It could have simply been a rejection of the $11,000 amount. People said, no, it's happening too quick, and therefore they decided to pull out their money. When they're pulling out their money, everyone else decided to also pull back as well in fear of further falling of the price. Anyway, uh, prices will eventually move back up. I don't see why anyone would be negative on the cryptocurrency space right now, but it kind of is what it is. We have to go through these ups and downs before we can go back up because it's these moments that allow people to say years ago, oh my gosh, remember all the volatility? If only I had gotten in at that point. And then when Bitcoin ends up hitting $50,000, people will go, oh my gosh, I wish. Remember that day or that week when it went down from 14000 back to 9000 Why didn't I load up? At least that's how I view things. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Mohair Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Neals, Woody and Daisy, Triple M and J, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Mill Weezy, JR, Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Nicholas, we're on Earth, one peace, one love. Cryptopolis, Damien, Setsuna, Nick, Kanaya, Richie, Rich the Third, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, and Miller Hitch Chest every day. And Kyle keeps skipping leg day. Thank you very, very much for your support. At the moment, the screen shows us that Bitcoin is currently down by 4.7%. It's not that bad. I'll be honest with you. We've had uh, days before in the past time, in the long, long ago, where when Bitcoin was volatile, Bitcoin used to go down by around 18%. And we had to get used to it. And it was uh, foretold to us that eventually Bitcoin would uh, be less volatile. We thought it was a joke. You know, we're used to, I mean, really. You would wake up some morning and, and Bitcoin would be down 21%. You'd have a cup of coffee. You take a shower. Bitcoin's up by 21%. It would make no sense. It was great to see those green days, uh, but uh, the, the volatility has definitely decreased. So being down 4% isn't that bad, especially when we've had days before, even now, recently, where Bitcoin goes up by around 11, 10%. Who knows if there may be a trend reversal as the day continues to go on, especially, oh my goodness, the amount of news that's been happening with the, uh, between the economy, between trade wars, and what was, the, oh gosh, something just happened yesterday. I can't remember what it was. It was about the... I think it was the the preparation for the potential of a of a hard Brexit and the the monetary policies that may be following and also the 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 rapid expansion of quantitative easing that's happening around the world where pretty much uh banks and governments see that things are going wrong and they're printing more money, not a joke, you can google it, printing more money uh to push into banks and push back into the economy to make it look like it's doing well. That's not a joke. I'm not lying. Uh, it's not FUD. You can Google it. That's exactly what's happening. They realize that there are cracks in the system, and they're trying to make sure that the any potential uh, slowdown in growth, which means a, a recession, uh, is slowed down or that it doesn't happen uh, immediately overnight. What a time to be into crypto. At the moment, no coin is doing more worse than others. 
they're all kind of floating around the same kind of range, I think, waiting to see if Bitcoin is going to uh, move back up at any moment. And nothing's doing terribly bad. Um, anyway, wow, that every day, every single day, there's a coin that has no trading volume. This one has $34,000 over the course of a 24-hour period, and it's up by 7%. Why? Because you can easily pump the price with $34,000. I hope that you all enjoyed. Hope that you all are having and continue to have and might have a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. That says $6,000, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fan freaking tastic. Thank you all, every single one of you, once again for watching and/or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you. <laughs>